Autoline Spotlight is presented by Ally. Do it right. On this episode, selling gap insurance and service contracts. I want to thank you all for joining us on AutoLine Spotlight, where we're putting a spotlight on automotive retailers. Today's discussion is all about gap insurance and service contracts. And joining us for that discussion include Doug Timmerman from Ally, yep. George Glassman from the Glassman Automotive Group, which includes Subaru, Genesis, Hyundai, and Kia, and Steve Finley, a senior editor with Ward's Auto. Great to have the three of you here. Sure. Thank, you. Thank you. Let's jump into it. George, I'm going to start with you. Uh, today's cars have got so much more technology on them. Is it harder to work on these things, service them? Well, they're, they're computers on wheels, and, um, and so the, the training is critical. And, uh, yeah, it uh, requires an incredible amount of, of uh, training for the technicians to be up on the, on the technology. And so it's not like the good old days when uh, anybody could touch the cars. It has to be done by what amounts to computer scientists. And, and Doug, do you see uh, this leading to more sales service contracts or not? Yeah, I, I think actually the consumer is very much tuned into it. You know, you have more technology, you have more complexity. Um, and as they think through that, um, you know, when you think about protection products, it makes even more sense than it did before. So I would definitely say so. How does uh, somebody like uh, uh, Kia, Hyundai, or uh, Honda dealership, you know, a any uh, mm -hmm. brand that has a reputation for really good quality, yep. convince a customer that they need an uh, extended service contract? Because the customer is going to say, why do I need that? Yeah, yeah. Y you know, I, I think um, the, the best way to, to sell protection products is, is through the educational process. So. If you think about today's consumer and if there was a significant mechanical breakdown, if there was a situation of total loss or theft, and the consumer thinks about how they're going to make up those economics, you know, that would be a big challenge for consumers. And then over the top of that, you know, there's value relative just the peace of mind of having those products. And then also the opportunity to be able to pay for those products over time, and you know, it makes the cost very reasonable. So, you know, I think if you take an educational approach to explain it to the consumer and obviously starting it very early in the sales process, which includes, you know, information on the dealer websites, you know, that's, that's really the best approach. I think that's what everyone's focused on. I had an F&I manager at a Honda store tell me that Honda buyers think God made their car, so <laughs> how could it possibly break down? Yeah. You have to do... You have to go through it. And one of the things is, sure. in the unlikely event that it does break down, it's going to be really expensive to yeah. fix these days. Well, in the 10-year, um, with Hyundai and Kia, you have the 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty. And, and that's where the education that you mentioned right. is yeah. critical because yeah. it's not 10-year, 100,000 miles on every component. It's the engine and the transmission uh, aspects of it. And so with all of the, uh, the as I was indicating, the computer uh, the navigation, the um, uh, in the case of uh, GM products, the OnStar and SmartLink for uh, for Subaru, you're you're in a situation where these items um, you've got to protect yourself if you're an owner and plan on keeping your car. Um, it just makes good sense because um, again. The warranty is not 10 year, 100,000 miles on all items. And, and that's an education process, just like Doug was talking about? Absolutely. It's mm -hmm. important to uh, make sure the consumer knows what is covered and also what's not covered. With all this new technology going into cars, are mm -hmm. you seeing more new car buyers come back to your dealership, say, to get their cars serviced instead of going to an independent? Uh, in a lot of instances, that's absolutely the case, and uh, there are a number of independents that will actually say, bring the car to the dealer. We don't have any of the equipment, any of the tools to go ahead and fix this car. And so, yeah, that's something that, uh, again, is, uh, is driving business back into the dealership. You know, Doug, we had talked earlier uh, uh, about Ally having training sessions for dealership mm -hmm. employees right. and you yep. said it, the purpose is to optimize results. Give right. us just a synopsis of what um, you do to optimize results. What are you telling well, these uh, Yeah, you know, I, I think it, it gets back to, to helping dealers, you know, ensure that their processes are right. 
um, processes are right relative to the customer experience, that they're right relative to being compliant. And then they're as effective as they possibly can be back to educating the customer. So, so it, it really gets to be helping dealers with all of those aspects of the business. And by doing so, ultimately, you know, optimizing the results. And, and again, our perspective is if you take an educational approach to the sales process, you're going to be most effective and the customer experience is going to be optimized is as well. Is this depending on the menu selling process? Yeah, you know, menu selling, no doubt, you know, is, is a way not only to be very effective in selling, to, to make sure that you're, you know, touching all the right points with the customer. I think it also helps educate the customer along the way as well. Uh, so, so most definitely menu selling is, is a part of our selling process. Are you an advocate of menu selling, George? Absolutely. I think it's critical to um, make sure that you are giving your customers the opportunity to say yes or no to the products that are being made available and to expect it to be done just off the top of someone's head as opposed to a, a menu that has these items listed is absolutely imperative. I would add to that. I would just add to that is is you know a very important part of that process is to you know kind of getting to know the customer and understanding their circumstances. So as you start the selling process very early in the process, when the salesman is you know starting to talk to, to the customer or even again on the website, being able to give the customer information so they're asking good questions that apply to their individual circumstances then you can apply the presentation to their individual circumstances. And again, if the customer understands, okay, you know, what would I do if there was a significant mechanical failure? What would happen, you know, if there was a total loss or theft on my vehicle? Then it makes more sense to the customer and you're selling the value of the protection products and, you know, customers appreciate dealers that handle it that way and ultimately you're gonna improve your retention rates along the way as well. So it all kind of comes together. George had touched on the fact that Hyundai's got this great bumper-to-bumper -bumper warranty. Now Volkswagen's starting sure. to step yep. up bits uh -huh. as it's trying to get more sales again, right. too. Uh, as Ally looks out across the entire market, are, are you thinking of different sales strategies for service contracts that will help customers step up beyond what the OEM's offering? Well, I think George said it very well, right? Those don't cover all the components and all the technologies in the vehicle. So there's still risk. There's still the potential of mechanical failure in those cases. Uh, also important to note that when we develop the pricing relative to our service contracts, it takes all that into consideration. So, um, you know, I think, I think it's, it's a, you know, how you approach it and how you educate the customer. Mm -hmm. Tony D is a F and I uh, trainer, and yep. he does the stapler close, and he holds a stapler, and he holds this uh, smartphone, and he, you're telling the customer, <laughs> you know, the the motor or parts of the uh, car are the stapler. You, yeah. It's not going to break down, or right. the chances of something going wrong with it in six yeah. years is something else. But this smartphone that runs your car you're talking about the computers in cars he said that where do you think that's going to be in six right. years so it's a very effective close using yeah. those props yeah I, I think you know the other point in there is if you think about today's millennials they, they have appreciation for that cell phone they also have appreciation for that service contract um, and so I think if you play off of that same mentality as they start to purchase a vehicle you know it ties in extremely well Let's talk about gap insurance as well. George, let's start with you. Uh, are you seeing this as a growing business or not? not absolutely. It is, I think it is a critical component of uh, any purchase uh, these Why days. So? Well, the reason is, is that, as you know, and I, I think everyone knows, um, cars are, they don't typically go up in value. Um, <laughs> they never do. In fact, they never do. <laughs> so if I told you that I had a great stock tip for you and I know that it's going to go down tomorrow and the next day and the next day, <laughs> you would not want it, you wouldn't buy that stock for good reason. Uh, this is not a piece of jewelry that's going to appreciate. So you don't want to put yourself at risk and this isn't a, a sales tactic, it's 100% real life. We see it all the time. People buy a car if they don't purchase the gap coverage, which is going to pay the difference between what the insurance company, if there's a, a total, either by theft or, um, or any other manner where there's a complete loss of the uh, vehicle, 
the insurance company is going to pay a certain value and they're not paying attention nor do they care what the loan value is. So people might be in that position where they buy that $35,000 car, $30,000 car. A year later, it's, it's worth $20,000, yet their loan might be twenty-five, dollars And the insurance company will settle for that $20,000 and the bank's going to say, where's my $5,000? So I think it is absolutely critical that customers really understand it and take advantage of that coverage. And it has to be bought on the lease. It's not, not well, an option to buy it. Well, it? on the lease, and, and thank you, that's a great point. Um, to the best of my knowledge, all of the OEMs include it as part of their lease mm -hmm. because they don't want to have that situation where they're unprotected as the owner of the car. So if it's strong enough for the OEMs to make sure and the banks to make sure that they've got it on these lease agreements, you certainly would think that a consumer that is purchasing a car would do the same thing. What about it, Doug? Is that the case? Yeah, I think you're exactly right. And you hit all the points. I think the other thing that's kind of unique today is you think about all the macroeconomic conditions. Used car prices are coming down at a faster rate than they did before. Um, if you think about interest rates, they're going up, terms are getting longer. All those things are ultimately mean that more consumers are gonna be upside down or more upside down. So you know, the importance of having gap in that situation gets accentuated. So. Doug, what about uh, uh, hybrid and electric cars, which are depreciating far faster than sure. cars with gasoline right. or diesel yeah. engines yeah. in them? It accentuates the point, right? And, and again, I think if you get the consumer to think about that, and, and a lot of those you know, points are pretty intuitive, you know, it's, it's, it's not only that you're going to sell more, but you're going to put more consumers in a better position, and I think that's the point that George makes. It's a win-win. It makes sense. You should you know, help the consumer think through that, and if you, if you do it the right way, then everybody wins, and the customer comes back to the dealership. So There were some concerns among providers, uh, wasn't there, about uh, a spike in gap claims. Mm -hmm. what, what's going on there? Yeah, we're definitely saying because of those same things, used car prices going down, you got longer terms, you're, you're starting to get higher rates, and, and even to some degree, the trend in, in higher LTVs, you know, creditors advancing more, and credit bureau scores. You know, we, we know personal lines auto, your auto insurance is, your cost of your auto insurance is uh, impacted by your credit bureau score. So as you have larger portfolios of, say, subprime customers, you're probably going to have more frequency relative to accidents. So we've seen, you know, the loss ratios on the gap going up. We've seen a, kind of an industry trend for gap prices to go up. And I think that you know we'll see that you know really across the industry on a going forward basis. But and the prices are going up because the claims the, the are going up. The price of GAAP will go up. Yes, it will. Yeah, to, to solve for those things. What about GAAP uh, on used vehicles? Is there a market for that? Yeah, you've got the same scenario. Like I said, uh, cars do not go up in value whether they be new or whether they be pre-owned. Um, a lot of it is going to be dependent on how much money the customer is putting down. So if they're putting a substantial amount of money down, then they won't be in that situation where they owe more than the car's value. Um, but it's on a case-by-case -case basis, but uh, I think it still holds true that that coverage really should be considered with every single purchase. Mm -hmm. Final thoughts on that, Doug? No, I think you're right. We, we see penetration levels very similar, whether it's new or used, and it's for the same situation. Actually, if you look at LTVs on use um, at origination, they're oftentimes you know, just as high as they are on new. So, Sounds like there's real opportunity to make more consumers aware of this gap absolutely. insurance. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Let me ask you a quick question. F&I yeah. online, uh -huh. um, the big trend, uh, right. but also some people who are sold on it say you can't sell F&I online. It's got to be right. sold in an F&I office by an F&I manager. Both your thoughts on that. You know, I, from my perspective, I, I think you're going to see the trend moving that way. Um, you know, can I point to those that are doing it really well? I think that's difficult to do, but I think everyone is trying to figure it out. And, and certainly, one of our focus points is 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 to help dealers figure it out together. Um, but but no doubt, if you think about millennials, they want a different experience. They want it faster. They're used to, you know, in doing business online, and it's all of us to to, to, to figure it out and solve for. Yeah, it, I see everything going towards that online experience also. And so it just goes back to making sure that the content and the explanation is there. Uh, at the end of the day, having an individual explain it is helpful. But um, 
as, as you said, I, th I think at the end of the day, millennials, uh, in many instances, would like to do their purchases or their purchase process online, and uh, they can read up on the gap insurance and the other products that are available and become familiar with them. Well, that's a great point because a lot of it is familiarization, and right. the more familiar a customer is going into the dealership, the more likely they are to buy a product. Absolutely. If, if Absolutely. you're not starting yep. from scratch on the benefits of the and product. And they like to educate themselves before, too, so that's, that's, how, they, that's how they do business, right? So, <laughs> yeah. Very good. With that, we're going to wrap it up. Doug Timmerman, George Glassman, Steve Finley, thanks very much for Thank a good you conversation much. here. Thanks for having us. Good best. Who's that? Well, that's Becky from Ally. She helps with everything from auto finance to F&I to pretty much everything else. Oh, and our wacky inflatable guy's broken. We'll do anything, seriously anything, to help your dealership. Ally, do it right.